Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me for this week's Shabbat Shalom quiz of the week. My name is Emma and I am the Engagement Officer at the Jewish Museum London. Now this weekly quiz has four rounds and each round has five questions. I will be giving you the answers to each round before moving on to the next one. As we go along, do leave me a comment, let me know where you're playing from, how you're finding this week's quiz, but I will just ask at the beginning that you don't leave any of the answers in the comment section so everyone can play along at home. So we are already at the end of January. This is the last of our January quizzes on the theme of hope. This week, our quiz is going to be all about journeys. Starting a, a new journey is often a time of hope for all the things that you will see and do. So I will be quizzing you this week on all things related to journeys, both real and fictional. So let's begin the first of our four rounds this week, which is Totally Tanakh, where I will be asking you questions about famous journeys in the Tanakh. Good luck. So question one. After the death of her husband, who travels from Moab to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law? So who travels from Moab to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law? Question two. Where does Noah's Ark land after 40 days and nights of rain? Where does Noah's Ark land after 40 days and nights of rain? Question three. When Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery to a group of traders, which country is he taken to? When Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery to a group of traders, which country is he taken to? Question four. Who travels with a great retinue, including camels bearing spices? to meet and question Solomon. Who travels with a great retinue, including camels bearing spices, to meet and question Solomon. And the last question of this round, question five, who tries to flee when God tells him to travel to Nineveh? who tries to flee when God tells him to travel to Nineveh. Okay, let's have a look at the answers to the first round. So question one, so after the death of her husband, who travels from Moab to Bethlehem? with her mother-in-law, that is Ruth, and her mother-in-law is Naomi. Question two, where does Noah's Ark land after 40 days and nights of rain? That was the Mounts of Ararat. Question three, when Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery to a group of traders, which country is he taken to? He was taken to Egypt. There he was sold to Potiphar, who was the captain of the Pharaoh's palace guard. Question four was who travels with a great retinue, including a camel's bearing spices, to meet and question Solomon? That is, the Queen of Sheba. They exchange gifts and she challenges him with very difficult questions that he manages to answer to her satisfaction. And question five was, who tries to flee when God tells him to travel to Nineveh? That is Jonah, who famously ends up traveling to Nineveh in a whale. So I hope you enjoyed the first round. We've got a lovely comment. I can see somebody playing along from Poland. Thank you for joining me today. 
let's move on to our second round, which is first journeys, where I will be asking you questions about the first time famous or interesting journeys were made. Question one. In 1875, swimmer Matthew Webb was the first person who what? In 1875, swimmer Matthew Webb was the first person who what? Question two. In which year did Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary become the first two people known to reach the summit of Mount Everest. In which year did Tenzig Norgay and Edmund Hillary become the first two people known to reach the summit of Mount Everest? Question three. Who was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic? Who was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic? Question four. In 1961, who became the first person to travel into space? In 1961, who became the first person to travel into space? And question five. Annie Edson Taylor was the first person to go over Niagara Falls in what? Annie Edson Taylor was the first person to go over the Niagara Falls in what? So those were all the questions in our second round. Let's have a look at the answers. So question one was in 1875, the swimmer Matthew Webb was the first person to do what? That was to swim the channel. He did it in 21 hours, 45 minutes. Question two, in which year did Tenzig Norgay and Edmund Hillary become the first two people known to reach the summit of Mount Everest? That was 1953. It was on the 29th of May. Question three was who was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic? That was Amelia Earhart. As an extremely talented pilot, she set many other records as well. Question four was in 1961, who was the first person to travel into space? And that was Yuri Gagarin who was from the Soviet Union. Question five was Annie Edson Taylor was the first person to go over the Niagara Falls in what? This is probably the journey I would like to do least out of all of them. This is, she went over the Niagara Falls in a barrel. She did it on her 63rd birthday in 1901. If you are thinking of trying this yourself, she later said in an interview, if it was with my dying breath, I would caution anyone against attempting the feat. I would sooner walk up to the mouth of a cannon, knowing it was going to blow me to pieces, than make another trip over the fall. So having looked at some real first journeys, we now move on to our third round, which is fictional journeys. So here are five questions about fictitious journeys. Question one. What is the name of the main character in the 1889 Jules Verne novel who travels around the world in 80 days? What is the name of the main character in the 1889 Jules Verne novel who travels around the world in 80 days? Question two. In which famous ballet does Clara travel to the land of sweets? In which famous ballet does Clara travel to the land of sweets? Question 
Question three. In the children's television show, what is the name of the explorer who travels with her pet monkey, Boots? In the children's television show, what is the name of the explorer who travels with her pet monkey, Boots? Question four. Who wrote the Canterbury Tales about a group of pilgrims travelling from Southwark to Canterbury? Who wrote the Canterbury Tales about a group of pilgrims travelling from Southwark to Canterbury? Question five, which 1963 film follows the adventure of a Labrador retriever, a bull terrier and a Siamese cat as they travel home? Which 1963 film follows the adventure of a Labrador retriever, a bull terrier and a Siamese cat as they travel home? Okay, let's have a look at the answers to these fictional journeys. So question one was, what is the name of the main character in the 1889 Jules Verne novel who travels around the world in 80 days? Well, I saw one comment come in that somebody was very pleased that they read that recently. So I think you may have got this one right. It is Phineas Fogg. Although a fictional journey, um, Nellie Bly, just a few years later, attempted to do this for real and actually managed to go around the world in 72 days. Question two was, in which famous ballet does Clara travel to the land of sweets? That is, the Nutcracker. And it is there that she meets lots of characters, including perhaps most famously the Sugar Plum Fairy. Question three was in the children's television show, what is the name of the explorer who travels with her pet monkey boots? That is Dora, Dora the Explorer, a very popular children's television show. Question four was who wrote the Canterbury Tales about a group of pilgrims traveling from Southwark to Canterbury? That is Geoffrey Chaucer, who wrote it at the end of the 14th century. And question five, which 1963 film follows the adventure of a Labrador retriever, a bull terrier and a Siamese cat as they travel home. It is The Incredible Journey, which is based on a 1961 novel of the same name. We now come to our final round of this week's quiz. We've talked about lots of different journeys. And for a journey, you need a mode of transport. So our final round is our transport round. Good luck. Question one. What was the name of the ship that transported a group of people now known as the Pilgrims to America in 1620? What was the name of the ship that transported a group of people now known as the Pilgrims to America in 1620? Question two, what is the name of the aircraft that made the first successful flight? What is the name of the aircraft that made the first successful flight? Question three, Rosa Parks is famous for playing a pivotal role in the American civil rights movement and the boycott of which form of transport? Rosa Parks is famous for playing a pivotal role in the American civil rights movement and the boycott of which form of transport? Question four. 
What was the name of the lunar module which landed the first two people on the moon? What was the name of the lunar module which landed the first two people on the moon? And question five. Which steam locomotive holds the world speed record for steam locomotives reaching 126 miles an hour? Which steam locomotive holds the world speed record for steam locomotives reaching 126 miles an hour? question so let's we've looked at all the um questions let's look at the answers so question one was what was the name of the ship that transported a group of people now known as the pilgrims to america in 1620 that was the mayflower and those very first travelers would have spent 10 weeks at sea question two was what is the name of the aircraft that made the first successful flight? It is the Wright Flyer, named after its inventors, the famous Wright brothers. Question three was Rosa Parks is famous for playing a pivotal role in the American civil rights movement and the boycott of which form of transport? That is buses. It was the Montgomery bus boycott and she has been nicknamed the mother of the freedom movement. Question four was, what was the name of the lunar module which landed the first two people on the moon? It was the Eagle, and it was named after the bald eagle in the Apollo 11 insignia. And question five was, which steam locomotive holds the world speed record for steam locomotives? reaching 126 miles an hour. That was the Mallard, which is now preserved in the National Railway Museum in York. And I should dedicate that question to my dad who taught me all about the Mallard and took me to see it in person. So that brings me to the end of this week's quiz. Thank you so much everybody for joining me and playing along. Next week, we will have the very first of our February quizzes. A theme across the museum for February will be culture. And so join me for some February quizzes on all things cultural, starting next week at the same time. So I will see you there. And for now, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>